remembrance. That sounds very nice. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we yep. are We're live. on the air. And 701. Uh, and today we have present uh, Mr. Myers, uh, Mr. Uh, Gillis. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Mr. Gillis, uh, Dr. Cena. Uh, we have a guest, uh, Mr. Beard. Uh, we have Mr. Delventhal, Mr. Olin, and Ms. Pagnano, as well as yours truly, Mr. Wilson. Um, there are agendas there, if anybody needs a copy of the agenda. There are no alternates required. So um, just let's go with the approval of the agenda. Are there any changes to the agenda? No. OK, can I get a motion? Joe? Second? Second. All right, um, I guess I should mention uh, about the Conservation Commission minutes from September 6th. Um, I have heard from Lanice, I've been after her several times to, to get, the, uh, get the minutes out on a more timely basis, but it, it seems that she's taken another position. She's gotten a promotion at work, mm -hmm. and it's taking up a lot of her time, and, and she has bowed out at this point. She will oh. no longer be our recording secretary, so. That's too bad. Um, I, <laughs> I, I took it on and put the minutes together after watching the, the, the meeting on YouTube from last month. They look great. Yeah, they really do. So does anyone have any changes or corrections? I mean, they were only four pages, which is very short. I, I'm trying to abbreviate. Just no. page two, uh, the li liaison report, Mr. Gillis, uh, Boho Farms. It's Boho. Thank you. B-O-H-O. Awesome. <clears throat> uh, this was the chairman's request. Oh, yeah, not Soho. Oh, Boho. wow. Okay, I'm sorry. Where were you, Bernie? Like a moose. Um, Liaison reports? Yeah, P and Z, Mr. Gillis, Boho Farms. Okay. Wow. Boho, B-O-H-O. B -O -B -O okay. Wow. Okay. And on page three of wow. section 10, it's like everything centered instead of left just right. It's just formatting. Yeah, just formatting. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> I'm not good at this, okay? <laughs> so... As long as you can follow along, it's fine. <laughs> um, also, is is it actually sixteen hundred and forty dollars? <throat> that just seemed like a huge yeah. There were like over a thousand maps. Okay. I mean, there True. were a lot of maps. Um, that um, were and there's a word that should probably be a working. Uh, and like item ten on page three. Page three. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay, which uh, section are you on, Tom? Item 10. Okay. Is there, is there two in that? Yes. Oh, yes. Is there one and two? Very much. One and two, yes. I think it's in two. Um, it says worked, and I think it wants to be working. I don't have it in front of me. Do you want that? This was about grants being offered by the Rockfall uh, Foundation. He's looking at Ah, the one, okay. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. And I believe I was in attendance on number one. In attendance? I'm missing. I thought I saw you there. Oh, how did I miss you? How did I? Sorry, Sue. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, you were there. <laughs> <laughs> no. And then I'm saying, oh, I was, <clears throat> I was talking down here, so I must have been there. You know, I, I, was, I was, since it was so long and I didn't get the minutes, I was kind of steaming when I started out. So oh, okay. I, I calmed down a bit by the it. end of the yeah. oh. two hours to do the minutes. Keep that blood pressure down. Oh. Yeah, I'm yeah. trying. <clears throat> okay, anything else? Just back to uh, Tom's comment. So these maps are 16. Uh, $100.60 a piece? 
No, they were actually more like 50 cents a piece. Well, that doesn't make sense. $1,600 for 1,000 a maps? It was more than 1,000. I, I don't have the number in front oh, of me. Right oh, now. I see. Okay. Um, All right. But it was like, no, it was like 150 each for 10 different reserves. Mm. Uh, and then it was, uh, I also had copies made for Burnham Brook, which I just went up there to replace them, and the map folder was full. So I'm not sure if uh, mm. the Nature Conservancy is doing that themselves now mm -hmm. or not. Mm. Every time I go up there, I, I look at the map folder. I bring them with me. For the eight mile, and uh, it's always filled. So I, I could talk to Dave about that. But. If you would, and also ask him about Chapman, because I had them made for Chapman Pond as well. Yeah, that's good. Like two hundred each. Yeah, that's good. So that's we're getting short. I mean, a good two hundred dollars, four hundred maps, two hundred dollars. Yeah. <clears throat> but um, yeah, I lost my train of thought. Okay. Yeah, no, there were there were quite a few uh, quite a few maps, and also they made that large uh, uh, laminate there, which I think was only it was twenty dollars. Oh, okay. Yeah. The larger size maps, like for hatch, that, that's an additional cost, right? Yeah, I got two hundred and fifty hatch maps. Yeah, uh, more because we use more of them, and I got an additional number of uh, Chapel Farm. Okay. <clears throat> so I think we're probably going to be good for maps for quite some time. Yeah, we need to keep a good. My bookcase is stuck to overflowing. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay, because I need chagrin maps. So, uh, yeah, I need chagrin lots of. We need a good inventory of that. Keep an eye on that. Yeah. You hear that, Charlotte? Yeah. We need a good inventory of the maps. <laughs> <laughs> we have tons of them. I, if you want, I will weigh them and tell you how many we have, because that's how I do it the easy way. I weigh the stack of 25. And you double it for hatch lot, works out perfectly. Do you have uh, nature? Pay off. <laughs> <laughs> I'd good. like to make a comment on the maps next printing. Do you think there should be like more information, like a website, an email, some type of information on that map? Because, uh, you know, you, people, it says to call, but I think people would be more readily apt yeah, that's to a email <clears throat> and get, do the website, check out the website. I but do you are think out. that's a good idea to turn them to the uh, uh, the town website where they could look at all the maps. Do that for the CDC's <clears throat> email, you know, whatever, so you could generate it. whatever yeah, I will. Uh, property it is, like the Conservation Commission's mm -hmm. email or the Land Trust's email or, because that's how people operate these sure. days. Sure, sure. So I think that a little more information on how they can contact. Well, the land trust generally does, I think, their own maps. We do our maps. I say for some reason in the past, I guess we've picked up uh, some of the Nature Conservancy maps. Well, it would only be the partnership between Chapel Farm and maybe uh, the Robbie Road piece that we might want to add there. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I'm doing all your maps, so any updates you want, just bring Yeah. Do you have a key? Yeah, right. And just the next time you're about to... Ask for a printing one, just ask me to update it. Yeah, exactly. Do you have a QR code on your maps? I don't think so. I, I, Actually, yeah. I was. Yeah. Because a lot of places. Yeah. Have, and uh, they don't have Little Town, but Seven Falls. Can you scan the QR code? I think that's a good idea that we should include a QR code probably yeah, going forward, if, if possible. Saw. Because with the QR code, you can get all that information in, and it's very easy to scan it into the phone, and it'll... Uh... On the maps themselves? Yes, yeah. yes, or yes. Or, yeah. on or on the kiosk as well, yeah. Right. Either way. Kind of obvious. Sure. Well, go, you, eventually one day you're right. I mean, a lot of places like, nowadays, like you go to a restaurant nowadays, sometimes they don't even have the menu. You just scan the QR code. So, yeah, I mean, one day for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Probably be easier to update. Well, <laughs> I, I can see the, the value on both places, but especially at the kiosk. Yeah, okay. Take the paper map, but at the kiosk. I, I will, Charlotte, but a little bit <clears throat> later. Maybe I'll take yeah. one home with me. Yeah. Thank you so this much, Charlotte. Oh, it's amazing. Thank you, Charlotte. Okay, regarding the minutes, uh, are there any other additions or corrections to the minutes? Can I get a motion to approve the minutes? Uh, motion. Second. Second. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll do it at the end. We got it. As amended. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> you requested that? <laughs> So I think everybody should start thinking about, you know, when they would like to do the minutes. I will 
I, I did this month. I'll do next month. But after that, maybe somebody else could. Uh, maybe at the next meeting, it, somebody maybe. could volunteer to, to do the minutes, and we'll rotate it. Mm -hmm. I actually did send a message to Deb Danette and Linda and let them know, uh, you know, that um, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Lenice would not be working for us anymore. And I, I asked her as a possibility. I, I don't know. Um, back in the day, they used to have business curriculum in high schools mm -hmm. for kids, mostly sure. girls. Yeah. Um, but I asked, is, is it possible that maybe we could include somebody from the high school? A, yeah. You know? Uh, it would be a great way to get younger people involved. They could make, I don't know what the negotiating rate would be, but it's about $20 an hour for a couple hours once a month, and it would get them involved, and maybe they'd get some of their friends involved. And it was just a thought. I haven't heard from anyone yet about, you know, uh, I, Deb did send it to someone who I believe is in the high school. Okay. So maybe we will hear back from right, them yeah. uh, if there's anyone interested in, in picking that up. And frankly, they could either come to the meeting and do the minutes here like, our, uh, like Shannon used to do, or they could just go online on YouTube and, and pick it up off of YouTube. Off the recording, yeah. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's see. <clears throat> okay, old business. Uh, subcommittee updates, stewardship and forestry management. Mr. Gillis. See, um, okay, so um, on the 9th, I uh, carved some directional posts for uh, the Harris property, and uh, they're at the intersections of uh, the orange and the white trail and the red and the white trail. It's a four-way intersection that was a little confusing. Um, and on the 11th, I installed those. Uh, on the 10th, I installed uh, DEP signage out at uh, Lena. Um, th the state requires in our application for our open space grant to have signage on all our properties that they participated in. And uh, so we're in a rush to get all that signage up because we were a little lax on some of the properties. So uh, in addition to that, I have an order in for four more signs for four of our properties so that we can um, fulfill that obligation. Um, yeah, I'm sorry I found that one today, but it was leaning behind the stone wall, and I think only because some trees had fallen down when some leaves had fallen, I was able to see it this that's time. That's near the kiosk? Uh, it was up by the stone wall, up by the road. Up behind by the it. road? Yes. Oh, on this side of the road or this side? Uh, on on the parking lot side. Yeah. Okay. But it was it was laying down. The uh, post had rotted. Um, I did bring it with me, so I can give it to you. Yeah, I called Jim, and he had already um, printed uh, the verbiage and uh, cut the sign, and they were in the process of melding those two together. So. All right. Well, we'll have a spare sign then. Yeah. Mm. And actually, the state requires that we have uh, a primary sign and a secondary sign on. Secondary entrances, so maybe we could throw that down on Boot Rock. And, uh, Boot Rock, or either that, or the other side of the uh, the bridge that leads to uh, the Patrol Preserve. Well, I don't know if Boot Rock it it, was the Boot Rock. It has to be visible from the road okay. across from the because I don't I don't know if the state participated. I thought they just participated in the one in the Patrol Preserve, but not in Boot Rock and not in Pizzini. Oh, that's true. Okay. I'll have to talk to Jim on that if we're not fulfilling our obligation or... Yeah. Okay. All right. Either or. Um, let's see. No, I went up to Chagru one day with my wife and, uh, and we covered the Blue Trail cut some trees. Uh, painted on the 18th, I went up to Davidson and painted red, the red trail. It had to, had um, worn away quite a bit, so it needed a few fresh paint. And there were a few trees down on the main road there. Took care of that. Um, the 14th, I went over to Jim at um, Essex Display and dropped off uh, a sample of the sign that he was going to print up 
with the four different uh, property names on it. That's Roaring Brooks, Zelent, Zel Zelzniki. Zelzniki. <laughs> Thank you. Hayward and Petrell. On the 24th, I installed uh, more deep signage on the kiosk at Sabine. It was down in the woods, and I brought it up and put it on the, the kiosk. So it's <coughs> visible from the road now. Thank you. <clears throat> On the 25th, Susan and I went out to four um, undisclosed properties and tagged <laughs> pink, ta uh, pink tags on uh, on certain trails for our Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Are they like pink ribbons? Ribbons, yeah. yeah. Oh, just, shoot. Yeah, we're just using ribbons. <laughs> I was like, what are those doing there? Okay, now we're here. You didn't oh, take, didn't take them down. No, I didn't take them down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I had a nice little bow, so I'm like thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Don't I would disclose just, that now. <laughs> yeah. Tell that secret trail. And uh, <clears throat> let's see. I was down in uh, Rose Farm, and uh, I noticed that Actually, when Susan and I were down there, we noticed it's uh, at the intersection of the yellow and the white trail. It was uh, kind of difficult to navigate, so I carved a post for that, and uh, but I haven't installed it yet. So if I have any volunteers to go out and dig a hole, that'd be that'd be great. Um, and. Today, actually, I replaced the blade on the brush mower. Rob Smith gave me a spare blade for that because the one that was on it was pretty uh, beat up. And while I did that, I <coughs> winterized the mower with store and start uh, gasoline treatment. Can that old blade be resharpened? Uh, it's bent. I'm trying to straighten it right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but it does have... Those blades have two sides. You flip them over and you get another another edge on it. And uh, so it's got a good side to it, but it's it's got a big wow in it. So mm -hmm. it needs to be straightened. And uh, I'm I have a wheel if, if uh, you know, if you want me to show it. Grinding wheel. Yeah. Yeah, I have one too. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and that's it. Is that all? That's it. Okay. Thanks, Bernie. Took the week, month off. <laughs> all right. Bernie, I'll dig a hole for you. Where is it? Rose Farm, Rose. Town Street. So I got to come get the sign from you, though, right? No, I'll, I'll help you. Okay. Put, put it in my truck and take it down there. Okay. Yeah. So, um, whatever works. Yeah, I'll call you or text okay. you. Yeah. Cool. All right, next is outreach and promotion. And um, you probably noticed on September 22nd, the East Haddam News published the information on the Breast Cancer Awareness Challenge. Um, of course, I looked on the 29th hoping it would be in there again, and it wasn't there, so I called the editor and uh, he promised me that it would be repeated again on October 6th, so it should okay. be in again Good. on this Thursday. Do you think we need to go more than that, or is two no. times enough? I think that's good, because it's on Facebook, too. We posted oh, it on it's Facebook. on Facebook, okay. Yeah, it's posted on Facebook, on Facebook. On Facebook too, yeah. so that gets a lot of uh, <clears throat> viewings. And yeah. I think that's good. Okay, yeah. good. Um, Joe, I know last month you had indicated you were going to be working on uh, putting something together for the East Haddam News regarding... Never rough draft, but it's a very rough. Okay, okay. But I can have it, I'll circulate it within the next week or two. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. And what I'm doing is just throwing in, like, the things that mostly my wife keeps telling me to throw in. But... <laughs> I would welcome you throwing in all the little tips. Because, you know, the thrust is, well, all right, you're not going to run out and get geothermal and solar. Those are big investments. But mm -hmm. can you put the sand pail under the sink when you're rinsing vegetables and then throw it out on the garden? How much lawn do you really want? Mm -hmm. If you mulch farther around the trees, 
you know, that will help to retain some, and it helps your well. You know, it's like kind of like the little things that you're doing for yourself that overall would help the environment. Mm -hmm. I have a suggestion on how, on how maybe you should start the article, because I don't think a lot of people understand or realize that the water that we have is the water that we have. You know, a lot of people think rain is new water, but it's not. So we have to take care of what we have here because it's all we have. You know, I think it's a thought to like, there's, I'm sure there's facts and like, you know, wordage for that. But I was asking my clients one whole week, I took like a survey and people were like, no, sir. I'm like, yeah, because this is all we have. Okay. Yeah. Well, and I think a lot of people thought, well, we got that big rainstorm, which is cool. We're good. But we were, I was pulling weeds, and you get down yeah. about that far, mm -hmm. dust. and you can just shake the dust off. Yeah. Well, I don't think people, if they drive past the dam on the reservoir, they go, wait a minute, why is there water coming over? Mm -hmm. But most people who drive past, they're going to the train station, they got one thing on their mind. Once you get there, you're home. I think if more people realize that this is all the water we have, they might be a little more conscious of saving, you know? Okay. Do, do we know what the existing drought level is in this area right now? After the couple of rains we've had? I thought it went down a notch, but I don't know that it's <coughs> yeah. None of the uh, little brooks and stuff in Lafayette mm -hmm. have got anything yeah. after, yeah. Even after all that rain. No, no, I've noticed well, that. The beaver pond isn't even up to the top of the dam. Yeah. And the pond at Petrel is still not draining into the wetlands below. Yeah. So we're still pretty. Yeah, I know we're low. We're still running a deficit, I think. <clears throat> My thought, Joe, is um, more on recycling. Uh, is there any piece in that on it? Or? Well, there is in my notes, but yeah. <laughs> not in what I've got so far. Yeah, okay. How long can this be? They, they like uh, 800, 600, 800 words. 600, yeah. Um, the events magazine is 300, right. usually, with okay. a picture. Maybe um, you could put a plug in for six to eight would the, be. Uh, composting, I don't know how that's going. Maybe somebody could comment on that. How many the people, town composting? Yeah, how many people got involved in that? Blue Earth, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, but I think if we... You know, kind of focus on, all right, don't try to solve the world's problems. Help yourself. Yeah, it starts at home. It's your well that's being impacted. It's your yard that's being impacted. Mm -hmm. It's your kids that are going to, if you don't recycle. So, you know, forget these big concepts. Yeah. I don't know if you Be wanna, selfish. I don't know if you want to go here at all, but another group I was with that did a lot of stuff on this a couple of years ago, the two... Things, the two simplest things that individuals could do that would have the most impact would be eat less meat, fly less. I don't know if you want to include that in your article. That's yeah, it's all about consumption. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, well, I'll circulate it in the next week or two. Okay, thanks. Yeah, okay, <clears throat> that'd be good. All right, John, are, are, um, are you ready? Um, yes, thank you. Um, so I wanted to start with um, something that we all worked on, and that was the Plan of Conservation and Development Annual Review and the additions to include various educational activities for the Commission regarding climate resilience. Um, I haven't followed it um, in, from the PNZ standpoint, but I know they uh, hadn't gotten to it um, I think the last time, the last meeting that I was at, I don't know, Bernie, can you give us a bit of an update if the yeah, PNZ... Yeah, we did, we has, did approve. It's, it, that's all been approved? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Put that in, it's, it's in the digital form online. Okay. Those corrections should have been made. Good. Um, uh, the other um, outstanding uh, climate resilience issue was um, the... Um, the study that is being done of the towns in the lower Connecticut um, for climate <clears throat> resilience, uh, vulnerability issues, the index that has been put together by the um, Climate <clears throat> Institute, uh, the, excuse me, the Connecticut Institute for Climate Resilience and Adaptation, um, and the meetings that we had here with the municipality in March. Um, that, I checked in with them uh, a couple weeks ago, and I was told that the those 
reports for East Haddam's vulnerability um, are um, just about ready in terms of the extreme heat vulnerability. Um, and the flooding is, um, is not yet available and, and is delayed, apparently. Um, I wanted to mainly talk tonight about some webinars that I've been attending, um, looking at um, resilience um, from the standpoint of um, DEEP. Um, DEEP has a, um, a climate resilience fund that's been very active and um, uh, in the last couple of weeks. Um, and I want to first maybe put it in the perspective of what we were just talking about, dry wells, Hurricane Ian, um, and uh, the, uh, insofar as our role is educational, I think it's important for, to understand, if not be actively involved in a resilience planning, which may be the purview of other departments in the town government, uh, but to understand um, that there are things that individuals and towns um, are doing. Um, uh, so these uh, webinars, and you're, you're all, I can give you the website if you want to take a look at that. It's, I think it's just um, deep um, climate, if you Google deep climate, um, and it's the Climate Resilience Fund. Um, it, the state is very active right now in looking at um, actual developing projects for uh, towns um, and helping towns develop their projects. Um, there are a couple of tracks. One track is a, a planning track where um, you know you look at an issue like Sucker Brook or um, uh, in other towns, there, 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 there may be um, nutrient runoff issues. Maybe even, um, Joe, you mentioned lawns. Um, you know, I don't know how far we could stretch it, but just from an educational standpoint, if we're talking about um, the, the overall environmental impacts of, of, our, of our, um, our behaviors, um, there, are, there is in the pipeline various ways to um, address those. Um, the, um, uh, the, so there's, there are planning, there, there's funds. Um, there, there's considerable, there's about $10 million right now in the state this week, uh, this month, for, um, uh, to help towns actually plan what they might do uh, in a particular uh, situation with regards to excess flooding, um, in particular, um, and, and I think there, that that maybe even Brent, you could even expand that to um, other climate-related um, impacts. Um, uh, the uh, the second uh, tract is um, actually designing um, uh, projects, project design or development. Um, not, not necessarily the, um, you know, the complete um, design, but um, a basic design of, of, of what, what is possible. And all of those, those are $250,000 to $500,000 grants. The first, the first one is a $250,000 grant. The second track is a little more. So that could be engineering studies. Um, and basically the purpose of these two programs from DEEP are to um, allow or to facilitate to towns um, in the process of applying for federal grant money, infrastructure money. <coughs> Big um, amounts that are, are waiting to be used. And all of this is not, um, doesn't devolve on what capacities a town has for writing, writing uh, grant proposals. All of that can be um, asked for from, from CERCA in particular. The, the Institute will help towns do this. So I, I understand very well that our mission is educational, um, but just for our own understanding that um, the background of the environmental challenges that we're, we're facing um, includes um, actual mitigation and, and projects um, beginning with a town's uh, planning and then 
moving all the way up to uh, receiving funds um, for um, implementation. Uh, and just the last word, you know, with, with Hurricane Ian, um, I noted that um, resilience planning had been done in one particular community in Florida, and they, uh, 12 miles north of um, uh, Port Ritchie, and um, I think it was called Babcock Ranch. Did any of you notice no. the news report on that? Babcock Ranch. Apparently, um, they had uh, done their, uh, their resilience planning uh, for a decade or so, and they were prepared for this magnitude of storm. And um, uh, they, had, they had power during the hurricane, um, and from their solar um, system, um, uh, solar energy, and um, I don't, I, I don't uh, uh, know exactly how the buildings main, maintain their integrity, but from what I heard, and I haven't um, looked at it in detail, um, they just had a few shingles right, fly off their roofs. Mm -hmm. um, so <coughs> resilience planning is, is works, and um, I think um, in, in these deep webinars, um, I remember them pointing out that you know, Connecticut is, is really, by 2050, and that you know, is in the near, not distant future, um, we'll have about a 20-inch um, sea level rise. And, and also riverine flooding mm. will be um, um, significant. So I know I'm, I'm projecting, but um, I just wanted to, to share that in terms of um, our background knowledge and our educational role. I, I think I did hear about that Babcock, Babcock Ranch. Babcock Ranch, yes. <clears throat> and I've heard they have uh, extensive solar arrays. Yes. But there was some trade-off there in terms of if you have so many solar arrays, in order for the sun to get there, they've got to cut down a lot of trees. And how does the wildlife continue to exist if you have acre upon acre of solar panels? So, you know, as with everything, I think it, it is a balance. Yeah. And I don't know how directly they were hit by, by the hurricane, if they were kind of peripheral. Like, I don't think... Tampa Bay was supposed to get slammed, and I think Tampa Bay came out yeah. reasonably well. Yeah. Whereas Fort Myers and Pine Island yeah. and Sanibel and Captiva got really, really slammed. Yeah. Um, it would be nice if they could predict the, the, the trajectory of a hurricane a little bit more accurately, but, you know, that's one of those things that uh, it's probably going to defy our ability to actually predict where the hurricane is going to be you know, yeah. uh, per GPS reading, you know? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, that would be interesting to, to yeah. look into that and to I, see. I'll, I'll send you the reference to the article, okay. and I'll, I'll read the article. I haven't read the whole article. I just wanted to mention it. And the, the last thing I'll say is that in these deep webinars, I noticed that one of the, the um, um, tr um, treatments or um, methods of um, resilience uh, that is favored in terms of uh, receiving grant money is um, what they call nature-based solutions. So like earth berms and um, really creating um, systems that um, maybe, you know, drainage systems where, where like down by our river um, where you have wetlands, <coughs> it, those natural areas, wetlands are in a sense sponges and, and do that kind of um, uh, that service that, um, uh, that that ecological service mm -hmm. and so um, it, it, it appears that we're moving towards incorporating those natural uh, kind of um, uh, techniques mm -hmm. into dealing with our own um, response to environmental stress So what's the next, what are the next steps, John? Um, <clears throat> so I'm, I'm... Or what are the next meetings or... Oh, so, yeah, um, I'm waiting for Circa to get back in touch with me about our, the research that was done in our town. Mm -hmm. um, and um, that should be, I, I should be able to at least uh, send in a report on that by the next meeting. Um, these, these webinars, um, they're, they're fascinating, maybe not 
explicitly pertinent to what we do, but um, just to get an idea of, of what other towns are doing. Um, and um, I, th I think there, there are six, I think there's a series of six of these webinars every Friday. Um, there's a lot of attention on it. Um, I guess finally I'll say that, you know, since I'm running for office, I, um, uh, I'm not involved in any of this. I'm sort of just an observer. Um, so I can't speak to, nor can I participate really in how these um, grants or this um, approach is, is being applied on the, you know, specifically. This is just from my own um, education. Mm -hmm. um, but I know it's, it's very widespread. I guess I'd love to see the report of uh, the flooding yeah. when it comes out. Okay. It seems like that's probably one of our biggest yeah. threats Definitely. in this area. Uh, uh, Moodus River, mm. um, you know, Sucker Brook watershed, yeah. some of the other watersheds, Eight Mile, that yeah. really, uh, you know, affect us. Or, more like Roaring Brook, things like that that could really affect um, the landscape. Yeah. And have. Yeah. Do you have any kind of a timeline for that, for the flooding? No, they, uh, they, uh, um, the circuit people just told me, as I said, about two weeks ago that it was delayed, and I don't know what the cause. They, they prioritized, maybe the, over the summer, <clears> they were prioritizing <throat> the, you know, the, the number of days over, over 90 and, and the effects of that on particular communities. But... Um, it's coming, and as soon as it, as soon as I have that information, I'll pass it on. Good. Hey, right, John, you good? Yep. All right. Thank you. Uh, liaison reports. Tom, IWWC. Uh, there is nothing happening that um, is of interest to CC. A couple of little household projects, additions, that sort of thing. <clears throat> okay. But. I probably should have said this back when we were talking about outreach. Did the events accept the article, do you know, on the um, Moody's Forest? Remember we missed the deadline by a day? Do you know if they accepted it? Um, I do not. I sent it in to, to Linda, so. I was just curious. <clears throat> um, Refresh my memory. What was the article on again? The Moody's Forest. The mood is farce. I see no reason why it was due, I think, on the 23rd, yeah. if memory serves, which I don't trust at all, but I think it was doing a 23rd. I think I got it. You got it to me sometime late afternoon, and I got it later in the evening. But it was the 23rd, yeah. not within business hours, but I see no reason why it wouldn't be in there. But we could certainly ask Linda okay. um, if that article will be submitted to Events Magazine. Okay. And then to write the article about <coughs> dogs on uh, um, open space and land trust land. Um, we had talked about following the state guidelines, which is where our language comes from. It says um, uh, dogs must be on leash or under um, control. control. Uh, <coughs> on, the, on a couple of kiosks. Um, I thought probably for the article I should have some sort of a, a official word from somebody who would be the person to ask about the state's policy, you know? And I thought <clears throat> Rob Smith would be a place to start since he was the ranger at, uh, the director at um, Devil's Hop Yard. But does anybody else have any suggestion about who is <clears throat> for that language? and? And how we are in fact bound by it. Who who is the um, the fella in charge of Jack Hines? <clears throat> Castle. Yeah. He's in charge of Macamudis and I think Gillette Castle. So he oh. might be somebody. Oh, his office is at Gillette, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jack Hines. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's all. Is that his um, name, Hines? I think it is. Either H I N E S or H I N D S. Yeah. For what it's worth, the land trust isn't as numbered by state rules and town rules and whatever, so we have a little bit more freedom to do what we want. We took it up at our last board meeting and we decided to say we should dogs on the 
Aha. Uh -huh. And that may not be uh, feasible uh -huh. in this state place because we may have to follow the letter of the state law. Mm -hmm. I can't see how it would be proper to have unleashed dogs. I mean, I wouldn't want to encounter an unleashed dog when I'm walking. I mean, it's not my dog. No. You know, I don't. No, it can be the dangerous. State doesn't yeah. require it. So <coughs> At all times? It's I mean, very... It only makes sense because, I know. you know, under your control, some people say, well, my dog's under your oh, control. Oh, no, no, no. And then the dog sees no, a horse and no, goes chasing no, after no, it. They're no. calling, you know, right. come back. I didn't come mean back. to start the this conversation. We already had this conversation. We did. We had this last <laughs> month, I think, because, you know, what if a dog <laughs> wants to go swimming? What are you going to do? Have a... A long leash to let it swim, or if you happen to be a duck hunter and there's hunting allowed on the property, right. on water, you know you're not going to have your dog on a well, leash. I'll, I'll check with Jack Hines because everybody's going to have a different. I think that's a place to start, yeah. and, and you know maybe we can't come down and and be completely dogmatic about it or pedantic, but we dogmatic. need to say, hey, this this is what could happen, uh, and yeah. you know certainly if your dog is loose. Uh, even if it's on a chain and it bites someone, yeah. you're liable, of course. 100%. Right. Right. Yeah. And who wants to have a dog come running up to them, particularly some of the large oh, herding breeds, you know, the Rottweilers and so forth. A lab I'm not particularly worried about, but some of the other breeds are a lot more aggressive. Definitely. Yeah. And, you know, the, the funny thing is nowadays with these uh, folks, a lot of times they think they have the dog under control, but it, it most definitely is not. Mm -hmm. Not, not... You know. Well. Okay. Uh, anything else on IWWC, Tom? Bernie? Oh, um, uh, P and Z? Yeah, okay. So um, we have before us an application for uh, Cold Spring Farms for uh, events. Um, they're going to have a series of events throughout the year, summer, fall, winter, spring. Uh, the largest being a the bicyclists. The bicycle, yeah. yeah. Like they had last year, right? Together, yeah, but they're going to, we're trying to get them uh, um, to play by the rules. Mm. <clears throat> um, so they're, they have a, a list of different events they want to, you know, put on. And, uh, and so we'll be, sitting, we'll be sitting down with them and working on that. Um, uh, Every source is going to put in a uh, gas pipeline through Modus. I don't know if you guys all oh. heard about that. Yeah. What, extension of what's going on in Colchester? Yeah, it comes from Montville, and oh. it's headed to Padham oh. to make a connection. And so they'll be coming through uh, where Modus Reservoir oh. uh, crosses the road by the transfer station, and they're going to draw down the reservoir. Um, this winter, two to three feet. Uh, wow! In order to do this, so um, that's interesting. Just a FYI mm. on that. Um, and we're still working on campground regulations for the residential zone. Uh, Jim should have a draft for us at the next meeting. Um, this is unrelated to P&Z, but I was out um, walking properties around my house, and last week we have discovered two dead deer that were uh, not injured in any way, bleeding from the mouth. And it's, it's, the cause is this uh, EHD disease. Hmm. It's called uh, blue tongue disease uh, that's affecting the herd. I don't know if any of you guys have come across anything like this when you've even heard about it. No, it's um it's carried new. by midges, I think, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> and you'll you'll see it until we get a hard frost and the midges are killed. Mm. Mm. It's fatal to the deer. Yeah. Yeah. And uh so I um contacted uh Andrew Labonte at uh Deep and uh they they took care of the deer, they took them away. Mm. And uh is uh, if anybody comes across anything, uh, 
his website is and Andrew Labonte at Connecticut.gov. Uh, you can reach out to me if you want. And what is the disease called? EHD. I can't pronounce it. EHD. EHD. Yeah. Some, <clears throat> Andrew Labonte at CT.gov? CT.gov, yeah. And Labonte is L A B O N T E? L A B O N T E, yeah. yeah. Thank you. So when one goes down, you can assume that the other five are going to go down? Yeah, it's very uh, contagious. Yeah. Wow. yeah. So just keep your eyes out um, and report it because they're, in, they're encouraging people to report these when they find it. What was the agent? Did you say? Um, midges. Midges? Uh, yeah, a little. EHT. Carry it. I don't know what a midge is. Uh, a midge? Hmm. Yeah. Black fly. Black fly gnat, yeah. Does it affect any species besides the deer? No, no. Just white tailed deer right white -tailed now. White tailed deer, yeah. yeah. White deer, white tail. Shame. That's all I have. That's a hemorrhaging disease. Oh, you find it? Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. It's a hemorrhaging disease, so it's. Uh, yeah, what happens is their tongue swell. Oh my God, it chokes they, them. They try to drink and they can't. They get thirsty and uh, oh. it it blocks their passage and they. Wow. They choke to hmm. death. Horrifying. Yeah, it wasn't a pretty sight. <clears throat> Anything else on uh, B and Z burn? No, no. Uh, Tom, open space. Uh, waiting for the state to respond to Jim's grant application. So, no movement. There was an extension on that till November 15th, I believe. Extension to apply only to Oh. <laughs> okay. Did he say the whole thing? No, I think I, I think you might be right on that. Yeah, you had to get your application <clears throat> appraisal review could be delayed until the fifteenth of. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, everything's in. Yeah, he's yeah. just waiting for the state. Yeah, I think we're all set. When I get that sign, it's going to go up to the Malazi property, Hayward property, ASAP. I'm supposed to have it done this week. Okay. So, did you know, Tom, did the application go in? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so we did get it in. So yes. We're just waiting now for, we have until the 15th of November to get the appraisal. Yes, so that's, that's done. Oh, that's done as well. to respond. Okay. That was just something that, uh, yeah, I guess they were looking for <clears> more. Some people were looking for more time on the appraisal end, and so they granted uh, an extension on that end. I believe that was the case. Anything else, Tom? Bernie, uh, eight mile committee updates? Oh, uh, nothing really to speak of. Uh, we have a new website. Um, it should be online either this week or next week. Uh, it's got a lot, a lot of new information. Um, data, da da da, and um, on that website is uh, applications for small grants. I know we talked about, Gary, you talked mm -hmm. about, we were talking to Boy Scouts and about uh, projects that were available, but uh, so 8 Mile has money available up to $1,500 for small grants, uh, and it's a pretty simple application on our 8 Mile website that uh, fill out and submit. Oh, we need to know what the what the categories are and what the criteria are. Yeah, it's the, all spelled out. Oh, there. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. What, what is the website? Is it 8-mile or E? Is it spelled out? Well, you know, Bernie, you'll 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 get it when it's when it's up and running, right? You can maybe you can forward it to the committee when it's yeah, yeah, sure. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, anything else with Eight Mile? <clears throat> no. Okay. Uh, next is planting existing garden update. I've been very busy at Petrell. Um, uh, 
let's see, I, <clears throat> I was with Sue and her husband Tom, I was, I helped them weed, partially weed, the pollinator garden. Um, I put 20 elderberries in um, below the dam, um, below the pond. So those, those are now in, and so far they look like they're doing well. I've got them marked with some fluorescent tape in case you feel like getting down below the, you know, below the water line and, and checking them out. Um, I spread them all around, so probably go back as far as where we cleared all the burning bush. Right. Um, I moved uh, 20 wheelbarrows and mulched down and about oh uh, the garden area around the ADA trail and in a pollinator garden uh, because I had an opportunity from Susan Kinsman who works with the, um, the group that's called, uh, oh, what are they called? Wild, Wild Ones. Wild Ones. <clears throat> Wild, ones. <clears throat> Wild Ones, yeah. Wild Ones Mountain Laurel Chapter. They're affiliated with Conn College. Uh, they work up there at the Arboretum quite a bit. Uh, and they had a, a native plant sale, and they had a number of plants that were available. I bought some for myself at three bucks a pop. Uh, but because they had some left over that they really wanted to try to recoup some of the funds, uh, I got a number of plants for 50% off, so I got them for a dollar and a half each. Mm -hmm. So uh, we got 12 cardinal flowers to, to replenish the cardinal flowers that were in the pollinator garden mm -hmm. that went away because yeah. uh, they're, they're biennials, which I think when I got them, I didn't realize that. I thought they were perennials. Mm -hmm. I thought we spoke that the, the garden wasn't conducive to cardinal flowers. Well, the two years that they came up, it was conducive. Yeah. And there were some it's a different... Flower, isn't it? <clears throat> Sorry? It's a wetland flower, isn't it? Yeah. It is, for the most part. Mm. In fact, that's... This is it. Yeah, no, I see them all the time. It's, yeah, it's gorgeous. It's a gorgeous oh, by plant. by the Connecticut River. Yeah. Um, okay. I expect them to keep coming back, and uh, I think with the, with the mulch there, keeping the ground below somewhat moist, I piled the mulch up about... A foot high. Around the whole, or no, just the... Well, just around the one area where okay. I was going to plant them, but, you know, of course, you don't put them on top of the, of the plant, so there's little, little holes mm -hmm. for each of them. Yeah. Uh, but in addition to the cardinal flowers, I got 13 big blue stem, which is a native clumping grass, which will grow up to six feet tall, uh, six each New York ironweed, and Joe pie weed. And um, I put cardboard down first and then I put about a foot layer of mulch in, in the areas where these are planted and uh, planted all those last week <clears throat> and then today I went over and um, let's see so that's right there. it's about 37 plants that we got for $59 so I'm very hopeful that some of them will come back next year uh, today I went back and uh, got about eight more wheelbarrows full of mulch and put that down on top of a big piece of cardboard I had and uh, took five hazelnut shrubs over there to patrol. Mm -hmm. Didn't put them in because the ground is still too wet for planting, but I just put them in and then put the mulch around them. So I'll go back there maybe next week when it dries up a little bit and we have some warmer weather. I'll go out there and get them in the ground. It still leaves 35 hazelnut shrubs that we have okay. put in. So. Is cardboard something you're ever looking for? No, I still have plenty of cardboard. We got a couple of pieces of furniture that had big pieces of cardboard. Yeah. And, and that's what I'm using. Okay. And the, the intent there is that when you put the cardboard down first and then you put mulch on top of it, you're, you're essentially suffocating the weeds right. underneath. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, then you get Town Works comes by with their mower and they're throwing all the grass clippings and the seeds up so everything can reseed from the top. But you just want to give the, the plants that you're putting in a good head start. Mm -hmm. Gary, I have a question about the hazelnuts. Yeah. Um, are, are they going to be producing hazelnuts? The hope is that they will produce yeah. hazelnuts, yeah. yes. I lived in a country in the world, um, Turkey, along the Black Sea coast, and hazelnut was one of the major Turkish exports, and um, in fact, the region I lived in, 
it, the whole culture was a, uh, was a, was Mark about. So, I'm sorry, was um, centered around hazelnuts. Mm. Um, uh, hazel uh, and they're um, they're very prolific. A hazelnut bush produces quite a lot of nuts in the in the three pronged little thing. Um, mm -hmm. I know the Turkish word for it, but I don't know the American word for it. But um, and um, uh, anyway, I could go on and on. But uh, I'm curious because I I, um, I love hazelnuts and I think everybody does. And um, if we could if we have 35 bushes. Um, it would be a shame to see all those nuts go to waste. <laughs> oh, I don't think they're going to go to waste, John. But I think you're going to have to beat the squirrels and the blue jays and, and all the other critters that will be after them. But the, the, five that I, the five that I'm planting now, I'm planting out pretty much at the top of the ADA trail where there's, there's no trees immediate in the immediate vicinity, yeah. Which, which means no there are also raptors overhead, yeah. which might keep the squirrels from getting in there. Now, I'll probably put some down on the lower trail as well, yeah. and the squirrels will probably get to them. Uh, but uh, the idea is to try to foster wildlife as well. Yeah. But if there are nuts, <laughs> there are elderberries that, that, that can be harvested, uh, I don't see any reason why people can't go. And if they know what they are, can't go and harvest them and enjoy them. They get pretty big, Gary, too. Um, I don't know if there are different varieties, but the ones there, I'm There are with... different varieties. The, the ones that we have, I have about 20 native, and then I have about 20 uh, hybrid between European and American. Mm -hmm. So we have both kinds. The kind I took to um, a patrol were the native. Um, and they do say they are tasty. Now, whether they're going to be like the hazelnuts you can buy in a bag, you know, I don't know. We're not going to cultivate them. We're not going to fertilize them, uh, spray them. The insects definitely like them. Yeah. So it's good for wildlife. <clears throat> but you got to beat the squirrels, John. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for humoring me. It was a trip down memory okay. lane. Sorry. Um, Gary? Yes? Speaking of nuts, if anyone likes black walnuts, uh, we have tons. We have so many, and our squirrels are the fattest things we've ever seen, and they can't eat the head. So if anyone wants some black walnuts, Funny. give me a call. Okay. Thank you, Charlotte. <clears throat> uh, okay, I had, does anybody have any new bills? No. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm jumping ahead of here. Um, re there was reserve monitor discussion. Charlotte, did you want to talk about the, uh, the new reserve monitors that we've signed up? signed up. Um, I emailed them, welcoming them to the group, and um, we got a report from Joe, and they did some crossing of the branches that had fallen down and whatnot in the Chelsea easement, and I took Todd down with me. There were two corners where it was kind of tricky because of small trees, so we eliminated those trees, so it's easy to turn from either direction, especially for the horses, and um, I always do a bit of clipping through the dryer bushes there, like once every 10 days or so. Mm. And uh, I'm glad when winter comes and they start growing. <laughs> I haven't had any other reports of any trees down that need our attention. Okay. I suspect we're. Birds up mm. before using a chainsaw again. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're probably up to about 20 people. As reserve monitors, so that's great. the numbers numbers are growing. That's good. We have a list of the the <coughs> properties that they oversee. That's part of the oh, spreadsheet. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I I have I have a, a list and um, names, and we have a lot of people that are multiples. You know, yeah. Some people were signed on for the same <coughs> uh, reserve as other people are, but that's great because. Not everyone's going to be out there once every week, so right. hopefully with enough people on each of them, they'll all get good coverage. Okay, thank you, Charlotte. Sue, Breast Cancer Awareness Challenge. Well, as Bernie mentioned, we uh, marked all the pink trails, secret symbols in place. And um, I talked to the company who does our, a lot of our um, t-shirts, hats, you know, logo printing. And the long sleeve t-shirts, which I thought were a nice uh, gift mm -hmm. other than a water bottle or a cap. We did caps last year. 
are 17 apiece. So my thought was to see how many winners we have and what sizes to order versus ordering, you know, mm. 10, 20 pink, 10, 20 brown. And sure. Mm. Having, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because if you order large and someone wants small, then... That's the so, other problem, right? Yeah. So what I do is last year I contacted all the winners and by their email and I told mm. them that they had these choices give us a couple of weeks, and I mailed them out last year, which worked fine, it didn't, you know, that was fine, mm -hmm. instead of them come pick it up, but I think it'd be more cost effective to see how many winners there are, and what sizes they want, and then order them. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Sounds great. Do you mm. think so? Definitely. Yeah, I think so too. Two. Yay! I've got one down, this is the second one. Oh. Okay, so that's going to be first one. Or <clears throat> for it's a... Uh, Neck warmer. Neck warmer. I, I, I did two of them for last year, and I gather from what Sue yeah, said. Yeah, they love them. Yeah. Yeah. So that'll be first come, first serve. But, yeah, instead of wasting the money and having them sit, I'm just going to see who participates, and they can give me their size, and I'll take care of it from there. Okay. I think the address we had was ccchair at eastadam.org, so people should be mailing if the, where, where they find them. Right. So and I'll, so I'll see them, and I, I can just pass the information yep. on to you. Yep, very good. That's what happened last year. No, no hints. Okay. <laughs> now, is that uh, 17 a piece? Does that include embroidery? Yes. Okay, very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, now new business, uh, new bills. Uh, the only bill that I have, and I, I can't really submit it yet, but maybe I could get approval on it, would be the approximately $59 it costs to buy those 37 plants from the wild ones. Um, they, they, they were all, they called them plugs, but they were, they were nice sized plugs and they were all much more developed than some of the previous plugs I purchased. So Great. I'm hopeful that we'll see uh, maybe 50% or better make it through the winter. Wonderful. Uh, I've already noticed that the two of the big blue stems have been pulled out Pulled out. Just laying there on the ground. Either a deer or a rabbit maybe wanted to taste it. And then he yanked on it. They didn't get the grass, but, you know, the whole plant came out. So I'll have to go back and stick them in. Yeah. Uh, but they're supposed to grow like six foot tall. So that's, that will be very, uh, very attractive, I hope. Uh, and that's along the lower part of the trail, uh, like next to where the, uh, the sunflowers are the helianthus, the Jerusalem artichoke, which are now starting to flower after the drought. <laughs> They're finally starting to get some flowers on them. That's funny. Uh, the first year they were gorgeous, but this year was so bad. Uh, but so that's the only bill I have. Uh, does anyone know of any other bills? Dawn had none. There was nothing in the uh, Conservation Commission. I had a few things at Shag Park, but I guess they haven't come through yet. Okay, I think we already approved them at the last meeting. As well, so I can always just turn, tell Dawn to go check that that meeting because we've already approved some of them. But can I get a motion to approve the, uh, the expenditure to the wild ones for fifty nine dollars? A motion to approve. Second. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> well, I guess I should say. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Wait. Could you have bargained them down to? <laughs> well, they put the work into Susan, it. Susan Kinsman was instrumental in getting the, I don't know, I don't know what's there, five, six, seven yards of bark chips that are in the parking lot that I've been working on, and it's, it's going to take a little more work. But if she doesn't go and do what she wanted to do with them, I have other places to put them. So, if anybody's looking for some physical labor, uh, I will certainly reach out to you all and say, hey, I'm going to be out there. We need to, I'd like to put some more mulch in that area where the mature trees are because I weed whacked a couple times, but the, the grass is still coming up and the weeds are still coming up through it. But when you put down a thicker layer, it's more difficult and it, it tires them out. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Colin, I'll bring you some of that stuff from the front in trade. <laughs> Okay, uh, public comment. Let's see if I have any anything here. Uh, Cam, do you have any comment? Uh, okay, I have nothing in the uh, 
in the mailbox. Our next meeting is November Tuesday, November 1st. Um, just announcements and other discussions. You know, I, I, I took your advice, Joe, at the last meeting where you said, oh, maybe we could get the scout involved in uh, getting looking at that grant money from the Rockball Foundation. Yeah. I passed that on to his dad. I suggested that we really would like the scout to take the lead on this, and I never heard another word. Wow. So uh, I, I don't know that they're interested in, in oh. doing, doing that. I was saying, really, our first priority would be a gazebo. Oh, at Petrell, that would be lovely, but, you know, maybe he was just talking off the top of his head. Maybe his son wasn't ready yet. Maybe his son isn't interested. But that's, I think the scouts themselves need to take the initiative. Yeah. As, yeah. The, as the, the, the young men we've had come here before yeah. have done that. And, and a month really isn't very long. <clears throat> just have something on his plate, too much on his plate. But, I mean, it's not just the gazebo. He, he asked, what's your priority? And I said, well, the gazebo would be a priority, but we could also do a few picnic tables. We could do benches on some of our uh, trails. Sure. But they need to come up with some proposals, I think, mm -hmm. help them out as, as best we can. The other thing I wanted to mention is uh, you know, the next thing that uh, the town will be looking for is uh, summar summarizing any major accomplishments for the last year. Now I'm talking about uh, July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2022. So if there are any major accomplishments that you're aware of that you really don't want me to miss, please send me an email and say this is what we accomplished in that fiscal year. I'll go through my notes and I'll try to pull out what I see and I'll what send it out to the group again? for comment. What are the dates on that again? Uh, that would be July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2022. I, I mean, certainly within that time period, uh, Sue would fall the last uh, uh, breast cancer awareness. Correct. So, you know, those are the kinds of things that I'm, I'm talking about. Um, and I understand I'm going to be getting an email in, in the next week to put that together. So, you know, go, go over your, scan your memory banks and see if there's anything you want to make sure that I, I know about. And uh, we'll, we'll put it in there. Um, Bernie, you're going to talk about your bridges, right? Come again? You're going to talk about your bridges. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Was that then or was that in this current fiscal year? No, I think that falls under. I don't, I don't know yeah. when we did well, that. Well, again, I, I need to look through my notes to yeah, see yeah, what, yeah. what no, I I'll was get doing. I'll get back to you on that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, we put in a, a bunch of kiosks and, yeah. you know, a new, couple of new trails. The bridge. Joint and, project with the, oh. the land trust. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's a number of things out there. The, the bridge on the red trail that looks bad. Yeah, the footbridge, yeah. 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 That's simple, but it's, it's so yeah. dirty. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> you help me with that, John? Or? Yeah. I just wonder, what what about uh, uh, the Moodus Forest? Was that done before June, June 30th, 2022? All the work on the trails was... July, yeah. That wouldn't make it though. <laughs> well, we can we can we can certainly repeat the same thing because we did put the kiosk in probably in this fiscal year at um, Town Beach. Yeah. But I know we were there on Memorial Day weekend. A bunch of us were there with some of the kids and some yeah, of the yeah, adults. Yeah, uh, we yeah. started to... Yeah. No, there's plenty of activity, I mean. Yeah, there's a lot of activity. Yeah. A lot of stuff our, went on. Our work party this spring was really nice because it involved the community. It involved yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. community people. That was, yeah. that was nice. And it involved new faces. Mm -hmm. and we served lunch. Yeah. You know. I mean, Gelston's property just developed over yeah. the last year. I was just going to say no. that the time frame that the Gelston piece got opened up and blazed and... 
public act. Okay, but a, a lot of you were closer to it than I was, so please refresh my memory within the next week or so. With email. Hmm? With email. <clears throat> With an email, yeah, that'd be great. Um, uh, and I'll just open it up to the floor now if anybody else has. Yeah, I, I'd just like to add something to what I said earlier. Um, speaking of community, um, the, this, this process that I explained, this planning and design process to deal with uh, natural hazards in, in the town, um, requires very specifically that the community be engaged. That's a criteria for receiving these funds. Um, at least two public hearings. Um, so something on the radar for the commission and our educational role, um, you know, a column you know, in, in the newspaper or whatever, um, to inform people what the issues are and, and why this particular um, intervention is necessary. Um, I see that as, as something that we can do uh, as a service to, to move this thing along. Sure. The future article, yeah. <clears throat> Especially, you know, at the time that something like this is actually happening. Mm. So that the, there's the community engagement. Deep is very aware that the community needs to have an input and to be educated on, on, the, on what's happening. Is that something that there might be a referendum for? No, is no, this is, just, this is just a requirement to get the grants that the community has to have you know, a specific number of meetings so that it's involved in what's happening. Thank you, John. <clears throat> any, any other announcements? Yeah, one thing. Uh, I'd like to ask Charlotte a question. Uh, what's the status of hunting on the Galston property? Um, the town gives out two permits. Uh, Jimmy Ventress, I guess, is in charge of that. And like right now, there's uh, at least one bow hunter in there, but um, they're they're very very careful. I mean, people are riding through there. Um, I take the kids through at least once, sometimes twice a week. We haven't had any kind of problem with it. Okay. Because it's not like. So well, either you allow it or you don't, and you who allow well, it. Well. I thought I, I I thought Todd told me once that he had. He, he would allow turkey hunting, but he didn't allow well, it. No, any no, other. We're, we're not in charge. The, the, our easements on the other side of the road are, we're in charge of, but the, the town easement on the Daniels, you know, where the trails are, <clears throat> the town is in charge of that. Oh, okay. Because uh, Jimmy felt that it would be much more successful. I mean, it was voted in something like three to one in favor. Um, if, if people could be hunting. Allowed hunting, yeah. Okay. But it's just, my understanding is it's just two permits. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. But Good. if you want to find out the fine-tuned details, you'd have to check with them. Yeah, okay. And the other thing was, um, I have a kiosk that I made, and it needs a place, it needs a home. And I was wondering if, um, it seems to me that um, either Dean or Gelston would be candidates for this. And I'm wondering what the commission thinks about getting that in the ground. Do we have one at uh, Hayward? Oh, not yet. No, no. We, you know. In fact, do we do we know? Because uh, Jim was telling me they wanted to have the uh, parking lots put in by September 30th. Is the parking lot in there at uh, yeah Hayward? You cut those parking lots in. Okay, so the parking lots in was, uh, Hayward. Hayward. And. Uh, and the Moodis Forest. And Moodis Forest, right. Yeah. What was the first one? Uh, Lord Wellington. Lord Wellington, okay. Your favorite. Right. Where is that one? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe if I can find the park on Newberry. Oh. It's not very well marked. While well, we're on that subject, the, uh, the second park, the lower parking lot of Dean has always been kind of an issue. It gets overgrown, and you can't even get to the signage. Hmm. Uh, and the upper parking lot is so small, there's hardly any place to park. You can't park there, yeah. 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 One car, maybe. If, you know, so if you were to put the kiosk in, it seems like it would go down uh, at the far parking lot. And, and, and there'd have to be a way that people know to go down. I mean, it's a, you know. You, well, it shows I mean, it on the map. Yeah. But if you don't have a map, well, it's it, digital. It's, it's, it, it's online, so. Yeah. But that would require really... Um, improving that area because it's right. It's 
it tends to you know grow up. Yeah, well, I'm in favor of the Gelston property myself, yeah. but I don't know if anybody has any. Uh, you really think it needs a kiosk? I mean, it's not that less than two miles altogether. I mean, do we have a kiosk at every single place? We do. We're trying to. Yeah. Oh. Do we have a kiosk at Dean? Which isn't uh, Dean like 220 no, acres? All it is is a post with a um, sign on it <clears> and, uh, and a map holder. It's That's a bigger property, correct? Yeah. Yeah. I would think that you'd want to have kiosks in the bigger properties where it's a more expensive map rather than the small ones. And we don't have a lot of parking space down there either. Okay. I would think that you'd want a kiosk where you could do something like this, where you talk not only via the map, but you talk a little bit about this is the property, this little background property, you know, kind of get people interested in I'm not just walking a path, walking a path that now has some history to it. So whichever the property is, has a little bit of history where you can write, do a little write up, put it there. Mm. And I don't know the properties well enough to know which ones. You know. But it seems like, you know, people would enjoy going, ah, I didn't know that about this place. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking, too, I've heard that <clears throat> the, the owner of Dean is, is putting in some, uh, some uh, uh, woods trails for, for logging, logging trails. Uh, I understand he's going to do some selective harvesting. Did um, Jim tell you that? Or? Did Jim tell you that? Uh, yeah, it came out from, from Jim's office. Actually, it came from uh, Dave Carbo. He informed us about it, and, and I, I started talking to Jim, and Jim said, well, he, he's allowed to do that. That's, that's permitted yeah. on his property. Um, but we also heard from Mr. Carbo that they were putting up no trespassing signs. And uh, so long as they don't interfere with the trails that have been cut and agreed uh, on the easement, that's fine. Uh, he doesn't want people walking on the logging trails. He doesn't want people getting hurt, and frankly, people are not supposed to leave the designated trails anyway, correct? So I'm thinking it might be a good idea to put one, uh, a kiosk, at Dean and uh, emphasize, you know, this is where the trails are with a good size trail map. Maybe, a, you know, an enlarged laminated map that could go in the kiosk. Okay. But then you have the question of parking at the upper Dean. Are you talking about the upper or lower? It's a, I mean, that, that's the biggest contiguous, I think, open space that we manage, right? It's Dean, it goes down the hatch, <clears throat> the Parker Road, the old Parker Road. So it's, it's a little unwieldy, exactly, you know, because if you park at the lower one, then how are you going to access the top? Mm. You're you going to walk all the way up? Or it's almost two independent areas, but we still have the parking issue at the top. You know, I've not even walked the Dean easement at this point, but um, if I'll you'd like, you. Bernie, maybe we could yeah, take, take a hike someday there. and uh, maybe sometime either later this week or next week. Next week. Yeah. Um, and we can walk the trails, the designated trails, and make sure there are no, no trespassing signs that would confuse people and decide where would be the best place to put a kiosk. Well, I think he's putting no trespassing signs up where the <clears throat> woods roads are <clears throat> just to keep people off of them. Mm -hmm. uh, which is his right. Yep. Uh, uh, but I, I go back to John's point. If we're going to put it down below where there's parking, where there's appropriate parking, uh, we're going to need um, to do some work on the parking area. And Now, let me touch base with Jim as well, because he said he was actually going to walk the easement himself. But the last time I spoke with him, he said he hadn't done it yet. Jim Ventress. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe, we could do, maybe we could go together. Yeah, we could do it and take pictures and yep. give them to Jim. Um, right. But, um, <clears throat> okay, so it sounds like the consensus is Dean would be more appropriate. Well, pending the pending our walk and our look see. Yeah.
Okay, any other comments, announcements, discussion? Can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The meeting is adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Gary. Can you hold on for one second?